All right. Uh, my name is Sean Diarman, and uh, I work for UC Davis, and I do a little bit of uh, moonlighting of Drupal sites on the side. Um, I was introduced to Komodo um, primarily because I got really sick of trying to debug PHP um, by hand by printing out objects and arrays and having them appear on the site, particularly live sites, because I wasn't doing that whole development environment thing. That was a while ago. Um, I've now seen the light, and this is uh, this is what I've used now, just because someone introduced it to me and. Uh, then uh, Active State, which is the company that did it, had a deal on it, particularly for uh, higher ed or for, for education people. So it does a lot of the same stuff that they talked about. So I'm not going to go into it too much. Um, really, you're going to find that if you go and try some of these out, a lot of them are going to be pretty pretty similar in the kind of features and stuff that it can do. Let's talk about Komodo for a second. Komodo kind of has two different products. There's Komodo Edit, which is free. It's open source. Um, and it looks just like this, and it functions almost exactly like this, but it doesn't do the debugging. It doesn't do the step-through debugging, and it's worth every penny that you pay for it, really. I mean, if you can get step-through debugging working, um, and Komodo actually makes it pretty easy to get step-through debugging working, um, then it's really, really worthwhile. So Komodo IDE is the, is the paid one. Um, I think it's, geez, I don't even remember. It's normally like $250.00. Uh, they often, around Christmas time, they always have like a 25% discount or something like that. Um, education is even cheaper than that. If you have an education discount, they'll give you that. Um, and it, okay, so just cover some of the same things that it does. So uh, I have my module here, and it's checked into uh, to, uh, a Git repository, and so the little check mark says that it's checked into Git, and the little uh, pencil thing says that it's different. Um, so I've now edited this file. You can go to source control and look at a diff if you wanted to see what the diff was. So a lot of this stuff is, is pretty similar. Um, code completion, same sort of thing. Um, you know, Drupal set message. I really liked what, what they were showing um, in uh, NetBeans and uh, Eclipse where it not only showed you the variables, because this it doesn't even show you the variables, but it also showed you the, um, show you the options and the, and the comments. Now this will show you that. Um, but not till you open up your uh, your parentheses. So it will pop it up, but it also is limited. Notice that this keeps going, but it cuts it off right about there. So that can be a little annoying, but then when you find out um, what you can do, if you hold down the command key and you click on it, then it pops open that, uh, that file, and there's the whole function right there. So you can actually get to it, you can read it, um, and... Uh, I didn't know that that was even possible, so I didn't miss it, but now it's like, oh, that's kind of cool, huh? Um, but you do find that uh, you do want to pop open these files from time to time and get the real, get the real function in there. Um, a lot of the... Uh, well, we can check that out. We don't need that. Um, a lot of the searching functions, again, are pretty similar. If you're looking for node.something, you can find those files. Um, you can do a find if you're looking for stuff within either the current document or the whole project. That's that's pretty standard. I mean, even like Text Wrangler does that. So, um, you, but you can do regex and stuff like that too. So, what I wanted to really show you though is this step through debugging. So let's pretend that um, okay, let's to get this going. Uh, what you need is you need to have something called xdebug running, and uh, there's directions on how to do this. There's a couple places online. There's a uh, a nice article written by a buddy of mine, Caleb, um, and you can find that one. It's, it talks about how to get Komodo um, with uh, Xdebug going, and it just kind of depends on what your development environment is. And so, but you get Xdebug running um, through your development environment, and then what I do, this is the easiest way, I think, is there's a Firefox add-on called the Xdebug Helper. It creates this nice little checkbox. Can you see that right there? It's a nice little checkbox that turns it on and off. So normally what you have to do is type this real, real long thing in the in the URL and then it then it functions, but it's a lot easier just to just to check the little box. So let's go to the page and oh look, we're getting this error. So why do we have this error? And look, it even tells that the error is in the theme, but that's not where the error really is. The error was in my code, so that's that's even not a very uh, not a very helpful error here. So I'm going to turn on xdebug. I'm going to reload the page and Komodo. Uh, what well, the first thing you have to do? There's two ways to do this. Um, you can put in a stop point right there, so it creates a little stop sign. Uh, the other function that you can do, I won't tell you how to do it, but you can tell it actually to start like from index.php, which is kind of an interesting learning experience to actually step through a whole Drupal bootstrap. And if you really want to look through it, that's you learn a lot about Drupal that way, but that's not how you can 
you know, fix your whole, uh, fix your problem. So what I usually do is I don't have that turned on. I have it run to the first breakpoint. So I'm going to insert a breakpoint here. I'm going to reload the page. And Komodo pops up and says, okay, you got a break. So it stop here, and it'll give you um, where you are. It'll give you all the variables that are coming through, too. And then so you can step over or step in, and I'll show you kind of what those are. But step over, and it fills out what those variables are on the left-hand side. So here we'll step over again. And so now if you're wondering what's in an account object, that's it. And you just you can look through all this stuff, and it's a lot nicer than doing like a print all on their page and have it appear, and it's all big and messy. Um, but uh, this is really nice, and then you can go in and actually type your code while you're looking at what the, those values are there. Um, very, very slick. And then you can say, okay, well I see the problem here. It's supposed to be this, or it's supposed to be that. Um, so. And then there's also step in, so let's run this, and then I'll, I'll run it again. Um, so you step down, and you say, okay, well, obviously there's something, oh, that's not, but obviously there's something wrong with this account, so let's step into this user load function, and so it pops in that page, and now we're in that user load function, and it creates all the more variables down here, and you can step through this, and you can watch this whole thing build through this function. So it's a really interesting way of learning how Drupal's internal functions work. Um, and then you can step out when you're done. Whoop, now we're back to here. So then you just say, okay, well, I know what the problem is. I'm going to, you know, the verse should be hello. And then you can turn it off and run it and everything will be happy. Um, but uh, that's, that's the one thing that it saved me so much aggravation to just have the step through debugging. Any any amount of money that I could spend on step through debugging is worth it. And Eclipse is free, right? So that's a good way to get it going. When I first installed Eclipse, I had a really hard time getting step through debugging going, maybe because it was the first thing I tried, um, and that was several years ago, so they might have fixed it better. Komodo I found to be a lot easier to get it going, but again, that was several years ago. Yeah? Um, so now, this is step through debugging because you're fixing a bug. Right. But do you use this to actually inspect what an object is? Because maybe you're new to that right. function, and then you're like, ah, oh, I can piece this together? That's true, yeah. So it's like, okay, I need the account. Is it UID? Is it name? Is it what? Yeah, which, what's, what's that value that I need? Um, and, yeah, I do that all the time, too. And so then I'll sit there, and I'll have it pause, and I'll... I'll run it and I'll have it paused halfway through here, and I'm like, okay, so I'm going to start writing this. I'll, I'll start writing my code. I'll get my uh, get my account variable going, and so I'm looking through my account variable, and then so now I'm sitting here and I just start writing and writing and writing all my code, and I forget that I already have a, I like have the session that's just been sitting there, and it's like oh I, I don't care I'm I'm done with that I'll just cancel that out because I don't really need that, but yeah I'll sit there and I'm like I'll run it again and I'll have like two or three or four of these session or these uh, page loads running because I wanted to see how it worked on each time. Um, the, uh, you, you guys were asking about code coloring. It has all that sort of stuff too. You can change that within the preferences. It does lots of different languages. There are plugins. Um, there's a Drupal pr plugin that I think Chex wrote um, under. See here under Code Intelligence. Where is it? No. Oh, where'd it go? What does it do? Um, it does some. Co it does. Uh, a, uh, a new project from template. Um, it erased it. Great. Okay. Uh, it does a new project from template um, Drupal module. Um, so it'll it'll create the module files and uh, kind of the starting of the module. And it'll also um, it'll do some code completion for uh, a node, user, and account objects. So it knows. It just gives you. It's just a generic list of uh, the all the different uh, object. Um, uh, Variables, properties that are that are in there, um, and so it'll, it'll give you that list. Yeah. Got two questions. One is when you're inspecting an object and it has the sub objects uh -huh. with little uh, with like a end value, can you dynamically just type in a change to that part of that little object? Have a try. And then drag the program counter up again and, and rerun that little mm -hmm. function. That's interesting. I never tried it. Let's see. So let's go to the account object and let's say 
nobody was somebody. There we go. So, so okay. Um, I don't see a way here, though, to move this back, though. I think you can step it forward, and it maintains it. But what does this little thing do? Pretty print. I don't even know what that is. Uh, <laughs> detach. Pretty. Yeah, it sounds pretty. I should run it. Oh, it's, it's grayed out. Um, yeah, so it doesn't look like it goes back. Also, so this is a, a little thing that I've run into. It's like if you start editing, right? So you can just say, you know, A equals 1, you know, save. It's already loaded this PHP file. It's already um, uh, compiled it, right? So if I step through, it's not going to find it. It's not going to find that um, that change that I just made. Because it, it, does, it doesn't it does know about it yet. You have to go back and actually refresh the page, even though it looks like it's stepping through. In fact, if you have too many uh, lines in there, it'll kind of get disjointed of exactly which one you're on. So that's a kind of a weird little, weird little thing. Um, so just know that if you, if you make a bunch of changes, cancel out your, your current session here, or your current you know, page load, go back and do it again. And, uh, and then you'll, you'll be able to go right through it. And it's nice that it also gives you all the variables here that it's about to use, even though they haven't been, uh, you know, there's nothing in them yet, you know, they haven't been in initialized yet. But it knows that these things are in there. Um, yeah, so I guess that's all I have to say. Anybody questions about this one? Well, so does anybody know how that compares to Eclipse debugging or NetBeans debugging? Um, I haven't seen it in Eclipse. They're extremely similar. Yeah. 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 And I would imagine. Platforms, it's a very similar experience. You, know, like you set your breakpoints, walk through the code, step in the functions, step back out. It's very, very similar. Yeah, literally over the last three years, all of them have uh, uh, looked very similar in a lot of the ways. Um, you know, you have a lot of people that are doing a lot of extensive, heavy PHP projects. And, you know, whether it's Komodo or not, you have to target the same thing. And... But when you're doing like a debug support or plugin for that, xdebug is, I mean, that's like over a decade old already. So it's got its API established. Um, so it makes sense that, you know, everything it does kind of happens to be very similar. The the pretty thing, I don't know what that was, uh, that that pretty... Yeah, print, I don't know what that was. It's a pretty print, so I don't know, you know. Uh, but so some of them are going to build on top of that for sure. Uh, and I think what I'm seeing, especially with, uh, what was shown with Rich on NetBeans and uh, Sean and Komodo, that there really is almost no difference now between them, except maybe aesthetics and productivity features. But the raw, I mean, the raw nitty gritty features, adding a project, I mean, look, our project files are very similar. I like how Komodo's got the, the search filter built in. I've been actually asking Adobe to do that um, for their Eclipse plugin, and I think I'll write my own. I'm tired of waiting. Um, <laughs> I need that. So, yeah, it's it, they're very, very similar. And I think uh, one of the big things that Komodo got with the Drupal community and Sean can agree to this, is the, uh, the debugger being like built in was like awesome for people to jump in and they're like, oh, I don't need to do anything. I'll pay 300 out of the debugger. And when you have to finish a project and it's your ass, 300 bucks that moment is going to be cheap. Money, mm -hmm. you know? Money well spent. You know? and, but Eclipse, yeah, it was a pain in the ass. Like Rich had pain problems. He had pain problems kind of setting up the debugging. I literally fell asleep at my iMac. The first time I set it up. <laughs> it was like four in the morning in front of my keyboard, tried it again, did something, and I got it right. I don't know. What it was. <laughs> yeah, and I was like stepping through Drupal Bootstrap, and it was a rite of passage. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, but without your aesthetics uh, platform, I think Komodo yeah. is only Mac. No, Mac, Mac Windows Linux. Mac Windows Linux, excellent. Excellent, yeah. thank you. So, as far as the debugging, regardless of the IDE, you use uh, text debug? Oh, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Correct. Gotcha. Correct. Yeah, Xdebug is a plugin for PHP, I believe, right? So you, you end up dropping something into php.ini, and it tells you about all that, how you do that. And in fact, Komodo even does it for you. Um, they, I had to do something really weird because I had map running, and it, they, I had another PHP processor, you know, because the map just comes with one. So there was some, there was some weird stuff. The version I've gotten of Komodo, it's like what the map did for people to learn how to develop. It's like, we'll, right. we'll just we'll make a nice interface, kind of get it set for you, and you just go. Right. And that's what I saw Komodo really do. Yeah, XDebug is actually built into the pro version of Mantle. Oh, okay. Like, that's that's clever. Into it, like, it's just there. That's good. And the other thing with 
Uh, I think like it's K crash grind, which is yeah. What is that? K crash grind. It's Linux only, um, and what it does is it allows you to see the stack traces and see like how many times some of your functions are being called and stuff. Hmm. So profiling. Yeah. 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 What's known as profiling in the interfaces. Yeah. yeah. And it's it's yeah it's crazy to see some of that's going on in Drupal. Yeah. <laughs> I, in, in fact, uh, just to share this, um, when uh, Aquia when it, when Drupal seven was getting started, a lot of this code was uh, being reviewed. By, by, by a Zen deep uh, kind of uh, analysis, and then an uh, Aquia, and then they were able to find what functions is Drupal running 180 times every page load. Let's trim back on that. Let's you know optimize. So yeah, profiling for for Drupal itself, you probably won't need to profile Drupal. Your own modules or modules you pick up, you will want to profile for sure. If they're doing anything more than kind of adding a new cool hit link to a node. You know. Um, Komodo will also do remote debugging, which I've never um, tried, even tried to get to work. But that means if you have your code on a server somewhere, you can actually step through it there. The results that you get back, the, the kind of interaction that you get back, is not exactly the same um, as doing it locally. So I've only done it locally. Um, but f I understand that it is possible to get the remote debugging going as well. Yeah? Kind of off topic, but to jump on something that Chris said earlier. How much uh, is enough uh, memory for your rig for development? Good question. Depends on if you're running virtual machines. Okay, go <laughs> without and with. What would you recommend? Uh, I'd say two gigs is fine without, but if you're running virtual machines, you probably want at least four. And I would say as much as you can. If you're running virtual machines as much as you can, you could get by with two. Save you so much time to have more. Yeah, I mean, RAM is so cheap. Sometimes, yeah, RAM is so cheap. And sometimes laptops, if you have an older laptop, maybe only two or four is the max, and you can get by on that. That's fine. It'll run. Yeah. I mean, it's not like you have a thousand concurrent users on a local laptop. You're, it's just yourself. Yeah. So, um, and Drupal, I mean, Drupal is 64 megs of RAM, but it's not gigs, it's 64 megs or, or, or 96 megs maybe if you have a big install. Um, so there's not that much. But you have Photoshop open, you have you know your mail, and you have uh, all these other apps open and starts chugging away. You want to have a little more. And then, uh, your editor is going to add more RAM right. in, with your project files when it's inspecting and when it understands. But right. it has to catch all that so it gives you the code hints. It has right. to understand that. So uh, that's why I'm, I was pushing my clips because I did some funky things before the camp, which was done for person, stupid for presentation. But you guys got the point, and yeah, you're gonna you're gonna really want as much RAM as you can slap in the machine, yeah. especially a laptop. Yeah. Anything else, Sean? I, I am done. All right. Well, thank you. Yeah. Thank you.